Good morning and welcome to Bible in a Year. Uh, my name is Pastor Jay Lutz and we are on day 69 of 365 days as we go through the Bible uh, from Genesis to Revelation and we are reading the greatest love story ever told. The love story between God and his people. Uh, that is the Holy Bible. We're reading through the New International Version. And we're following together the Adventure Timeline, uh, found, created by Jeff Cavins. And we are going through the period of desert wanderings. Now, we're reading Numbers chapter 21, Deuteronomy chapter 22, and Psalm 102. Now, Numbers 21, we hear the Battle of Israel, where they completely destroyed the Canaanite king Arad and his people. The Israelites again grumble towards God. God sends venomous snakes to bite the people. But those who look at the bronze staff that Moses holds would be saved, would be cured. And lastly, the story of Israel's journey to Moab and their defeat. The kings of the Amorites, Sion and Og. Deuteronomy chapter 22, we continue as we did from last week where we talked about various laws of the Lord and then we'll be talking about the laws surrounding marriage and the violations of that said marriage. And lastly, Psalm 102, a psalm of lament, a petition, a prayer of an afflicted man. Okay, let's get into it. Numbers chapter 21. When the Canaanite king of Arad, who lived in the Negev, heard that Israel was coming along the road to Atharim, he attacked the Israelites and captured some of them. Then Israel made this vow to the Lord, If you will deliver these people into our hands, we will totally destroy their cities. The Lord listened to Israel's plea and gave the Canaanites over to them. They completely destroyed them and their towns. So the place was named Hormah. They traveled from Mount Hor, along the route to the Red Sea, to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses, and they said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the desert? There is no bread. There is no water. And we detest this miserable food. Remember, they had manna and quail. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and they looked at the bronze snake, he lived. The Israelites moved on and cap camped at Oboth. They set out from Oboth and camped in Lai Abram, in the desert that faces Moab towards the sunrise. From there they moved on and camped in the Zered Valley. <clears throat> they set out from there and camped along Arnon which is the desert extending into the Amorite territory. The Arnon is the border of Moab, between Moab and the Amorites. This is why the book of the wars of the Lord says, Wahib and Sufa, the ravines, the Arnon, and the slopes of the ravines that lead to the site of Ar and lies along the borders of Moab. From there they continued on to Beer, the well where the Lord said to Moses, Gather the people together, and I will give them water. Then Israel sang this song, Spring up, O well, sing about it, about the well that the, princess, the princes dug, that the nobles of the people sank, the nobles with scepters and staffs. Then they went from the desert to Matna, and from Matna, to Nahaliel, from Nahaliel to Bamoth, and from Bamoth to the valley of Moab, where the top of Pisgah 
overlooks the wasteland. Israel sent messengers to say to Sion, king of the Amorites, Let us pass through your country. We will not turn aside into any field or vineyard, or drink water from any well. We will travel along the king's highway until we have passed through your territory. But Zion would not let Israel pass through his territory. He mustered his entire army and marched out into the desert against Israel. When he reached Jahaz, he fought with Israel. Israel, however, put him to the sword and took over his land from Arnon to the Jabbok but only as far as the Ammonites, because their border was fortified. Israel captured all the cities of the Amorites and occupied them, including Heshbon and all its surrounding settlements. Heshbon was the city of Sion, king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab and had taken from him all of his land as far as Arnon. This is why the poets say, Come to Heshbon and let it be rebuilt. Let Sion's city be restored. Fire went out from Heshbon, a blaze from the city of Sion. It consumed Ar of Moab, the citizens of Arnon's height. Woe to you, O Moab! You were destroyed, O people of Chemosh. He has given up his sons as fugitives and his daughters as captives to Sion, king of the Amorites. But we have overthrown them. Heshbon is destroyed all the way to Dibon. We have demolished them as far as Nopha, which extends to Mediba. As Israel settled in the land of the Amorites, after Moses had sent spies to Jazer, the Israelites captured its surrounding settlements and drove out the Amorites who were there. Then they turned and went up along the road toward Bashan. And Og, king of Bashan, and his whole army marched out to meet him in battle. At Edri. The Lord said to Moses, Do not be afraid of him, for I have handed him over to you, with his whole army in his land. Do to him what you did to Sion, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon. So they struck him down, together with his sons and his whole army, leaving them no survivors, and they took possession of his land. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 22. If you see your brothers, ox or sheep strain, do not ignore it, but be sure to take it back to him. If the brother does not live near you, or if you do not know who he is, take it home with you. Keep it until he comes looking for it, and give it back to him. Do the same if you find your brother's donkey or his cloak or anything he loses. Do not ignore it. If you see your brother's donkey or his ox fall off the road, do not ignore it. Help him get it to its feet. A woman must not wear men's clothing, nor a man wear women's clothing, for the Lord your God detests anyone who does this. If you come across a bird's nest beside the road, either in a tree or on the ground, and the mother is sitting on the young or on the egg, do not take the mother with the young. You may take the young, but be sure to let the mother go, so that it may go well with you, and you may have a long life. When you build a new house, make a parapet around your roof, so you may not bring the guilt of bloodshed on your house if someone falls from the roof. Do not plant two kinds of seeds in your vineyard. If you do, if you do, not only the crops you plant, but also the fruit of the vineyard will be defiled. Do not plow with an ox and a donkey yoked together. Do not wear clothes of wool and linen woven together. Make tassels on the four corners of the cloak you wear. And if, you, if a man takes a wife and after lying with her, dislikes her and slanders her and gives her a bad name, saying, I married this woman, but when I approached her, I did not find proof of her virginity. Then the girl's father and mother shall bring proof that she was a virgin to the town elder at the gate. The girl's father will say to the elder, I gave my daughter in marriage to this man, but he dislikes her. Now he has slandered her and said, I did not find your daughter to be a virgin, but here's the proof of my daughter's virginity. Then her parents shall display the cloth before the elders of the town, and the elders shall take the man and punish him. They shall find him a hundred shekels of silver and give them to a girl's father because this man has given an Israelite virgin a bad name. She shall continue to be his wife. He must not divorce her as long as he lives. 
If, however, the charge is true and no proof of the girl's virginity can be found, she shall be brought to the door of the father's house, and there the man of her town shall stone her to death. She has done a disgraceful thing in Israel by being promiscuous while still in her father's house. You must purge the evil from amongst you. If a man is found sleeping with another man's wife, both the man who slept with her and the woman must die. You must purge the evil from Israel. If a man, if a man happens to meet in a town a virgin pledged to be married, and he sleeps with her, you shall take both of them to the gate of that town and stone them to death. The girl because she was in a town and did not scream for help, and the man because he violated another man's wife. You must purge the evil from amongst you. But if out in the country a man happens to meet a, wo a girl pledged to be married and rapes her, only the man who has done this shall die. Do nothing to the girl. She has committed no sin deserving death. This case is like that of someone who attacks and murders his neighbor. But the man found the girl out in the country, and though the betrothed girl screamed, there was no one to rescue her. If a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged to be married and rapes her, and they are discovered, he shall pay the girl's father fifty shekels of silver. He must marry the girl, for he has violated her. He can never divorce her as long as he lives. A man is not to marry his father's wife. He must not disgrace his father's bed. Here ends our second reading. Our last reading comes from Psalm 102. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let me cry for help. Come to me. Do not hide your face from me when I am in distress. Turn your ear to me when I call. Me answer quickly. For my days vanish like smoke. My bones burn like glowing embers. My heart is blighted and withered like glass. I forget to eat my food. Because of your loud groaning, I am reduced to skin and bones. I am like a desert owl, like an owl among the ruins. I lie awake. I become like a bird, alone on a roof. All day long, my enemies taunt me. Those who rile against me use my name as a curse. For I eat ashes as my food and mingle my drink with tears. Because of your great wrath, for you have taken me up and thrown me aside. My days are like the evening shadow. I wither away like grass. But you, O Lord, sit enthroned forever. Your renown endures through all generations. You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to show favor to her. The appointed time has come, for her stones are dear to your servants. Her very dusty moves them to pity. The nations will fear the name of the Lord. All the kings of the earth will revere your glory, for the Lord will rebuild Zion and appear in his glory. He will respond to the prayer of the destitute. He will not despise their plea. Let this be written for a future generation, that a people not yet created may praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his sanctuary on high. From heaven he viewed the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners and release those condemned to death. So the name of the Lord will be declared in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem when the peoples and the kingdom assembled to worship the Lord. In the course of my life, he broke my strength. He cut short my days. So I said, do not take me away, O my God, in the midst of my days. Your years go on through all generations. In the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like garments, like clothing you will change them, and they will be discarded. But you remain the same and your years will never end. The children of your servants will live in your presence. Their descendants will be established before you. Sends the word of the Lord. Now this psalm is a psalm of lament, but even within the laments, we hear uh, many good things that God is doing. Um, it says that he will not take them away, he will not let them perish, um, though they wear out like garments, it says, uh, like clothing, you will change them and they will be discarded. Uh, this speaks to the end of times when God will change out. It says, um, talks about the tribulation and how their garments 
are uh, become white uh, because of uh, it says um, you'll be like scarlet but I will make you white as snow God redeems us uh, God in his image he sees us as his blameless um, children children of God uh, he appeal he appeals to those who appeal to him in distress that's a great comfort we have in our God we hear of the various laws that God puts forward um, about helping your neighbor. If you see somebody in need, somebody in help, don't ignore them. Don't walk past them. This is the problem that we see with with the Good Samaritan is that he doesn't he he takes this seriously. He takes this chapter twenty two seriously about not ignoring his neighbor but helping them. You see your brother's donkey or his cloak or anything he loses, don't ignore it. Also, we see in the marriage violations that um, God wants a man and a woman to come together as one. Uh, he doesn't want one to to uh, uh, sleep with a virgin before she's married, especially if she's pledged to someone else. Um, shouldn't rape, uh, shouldn't steal. If a woman screams and she she's not heard, that man is pledged and to die. Um, and you shouldn't marry your father's wife. That's dishonoring. Uh, so we see these things. That I feel like these are pretty straightforward things that we see throughout Scripture. They're continuing to re repeat. Why? Because they're important things that we need to know. Also, we see the story of many conquerings. The conquering of the Canaanite king, Arad, the defeat of Sion and Og. We see the journey uh, of the people uh, to Moab. Uh, and then we see the story, the very, um, the precursor to Christ, the story of the bronze snake being lifted up. And we still have that bronze snake is used in our medical field as a symbol uh, of healing. Uh, and the reason why it's a symbol of healing is because of this story right here, the bronze snake, um, in which the people disobey God, and God sends venomous snakes upon them, and then Moses pleads for their life, and God says, if you put a snake on a pole and lift it up, if those lift, people lift their eyes to the snake on the pole that's going to be lifted up, they will be saved. We see this a precursor to Christ, because when Christ, who dies for us, is lifted up on the cross, and we look to him uh, for our salvation, we will be saved as well. Uh, may you ever look to Christ, look to his cross, that you might humbly come to the foot of his cross, that you might be saved. Have a blessed day.